going on youtube uh andrew miller shane black from hook'emheadlines.com uh we are coming back at y'all today with uh um we're going through a couple of items here but we're going to start we're looking at uh texas basketball um <laughs> since the last time we had joined y'all uh a ton has happened um we've got obviously rodney terry getting the interim tag removed he ended up getting a five-year deal um believe worth 15.3 million in total um Longer term deal than I expected, but we'll get into thoughts of the hiring and that deal in a second. Um, I don't know how closely y'all watch the page. Uh, you know, I was kind of complaining about this before, but uh, if y'all were watching, um, I did not get a recap video up for the Miami game because I was kind of upset about that and just kind of tired from the weekend. So I did my article for the site. Also, I I was just tired of having the videos getting taken down. Uh, I did a Xavier recap that actually stayed up for quite a while. That was like probably four or five days before that got removed. And then uh, YouTube also blocked uh, my preview video for Miami, which was up for about a whole 10 minutes before that got taken down. So, um, I mean, I, I was just enthralled by how Texas played, especially in the Sweet 16. Um, that was one of the most impressive performances of the entire season, I would say, complete team showing. Um, but yeah, and now we've got a situation where, you know, Rodney Terry's already hired. I fully expected us to be talking about the coaching search at the moments. Um, but, you know, along with a lot of the other big coach openings around the college basketball landscape that I thought were still going to be openings heading into the offseason, they've already been filled. Um so, yeah, I, I guess starting off with the Rodney Terry move, uh, Shane, what are your thoughts? And then I guess just about the way the season ended. I mean, unfortunately, the way the season ended, um, it seemed like Texas had a strong hold on that game, and then they didn't. Um, but, I mean, it, it, it was one of the best seasons of the past two decades in uh, Texas basketball history. He proved his medal with the whistle, and he got that nod to be the interim on December 12th and leading Texas all the way to the Elite Eight, um, also to a Big 12 tournament title and a second place finish in the conference is almost as good as you can do in that situation. And people say that Chris Beard, Chris Beard built team, well, that is true. I think um, we're going to get into this, but I think the way that the players respected Terry went along up the ladder to CDC and Jay Hartzell, seeing that, the way alumni respected Terry, Ford, um, LaMarcus Aldridge, Kevin Durant getting involved during the tournament, and then keeping the recruiting class together with two five-stars signed and Ron Holland and A.J. Johnson. I think that was another really big plus for Terry. Um, You're going to get to see him put to the test in the same way that Chris Beard was in the spring of 2021, when you know, you're faced with a roster that's going to be full of turnover. I actually think it's going to be very close in terms of the number of returning players that Chris Beard had for the 2021-22 season compared to what Terry's going to have for 2023-24. Because, you know, the Longhorns still got back guys like, what was it, like Courtney Ramey, Brock Cunningham, Andrew Jones, like some key guys in that rotation. So, I mean, I think maybe Texas ends up getting back like, Ooh, five guys, six, uh, what, six would be best case scenario, I think. So, yeah, so, I mean, so Texas mainly worked with a nine man rotation this year for the no more college eligibility. Uh, Timmy Allen, Christian Bishop, Marcus Carr, Jabari Rice. So that's four right yeah. away. Um, so that five that could, and then obviously, I think you're also referring to uh, Rowan Brumball. And uh, Alex and Amekwe. So that's like seven guys who, you know, hopefully will make their way back on the roster. I can guarantee all seven won't be back. So then it's who is going to come back and how many of them are going to come back. But what you said relating it to the first year with Beard, I think that very well could be the case. I mean, we just saw Tyrese Hunter announce his name into the NBA draft. Uh, he add on a caveat, uh, he's keeping his college eligibility which uh, the NBA has done a nice job. These players go through the process without hiring an agent, trying to test the waters, and then if they want to return, I think it's like a month out before the NBA drafts the, the deadline, they can return back to school. So um, I don't know if you have some Hunter moves specifically, 
But I, I did think that was kind of interesting that he announced. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I wanted to wrap up my, my thoughts on Rodney Terry here first. But, yeah, no, I mean, there's a lot to talk about there with the Tyrese Hunter move. Um, abrupt, for sure. I was expecting something from Dylan Mitchell before Tyrese Hunter because I, I didn't think we were going to hear anything from Tyrese Hunter maybe entering the portal because, I mean, he's already entered the portal once and – I mean, he was recruited here by Chris Beard, so, I, I mean, yeah. And obviously, he didn't have the season that a lot of people expected of him. Um, that said, for Rodney Terry, I think the thing that a lot of, you know, I've mentioned this a lot, but I think the thing that a lot of people are going to be watching for literally the rest of the year, I don't know if you saw this, his first trip for a coach visit was to Trey Johnson, the number one recruit in the nation in the 2024 class. I've talked about that at nauseum. I got to see him play twice this year. I mean, yeah, he's the real deal. He's the guy that looks like he, at the moment, I know this is looking super far ahead, but that's what people do when they're talking about the NBA draft. Trey Johnson could play in the NBA tomorrow. Like, he's that good. Um, he looks the part of a number one overall recruit in the nation. You know, Isaiah Collier, the kid that's going to USC, is the number one recruit in the nation in the 2023 class. But I think Trey Johnson is a lot better um, of a prospect, both for the college and – or both for college and the NBA. Um, so that recruitment for Trey Johnson, it's so weird. I think about it like for Rodney Terry, it's a test like it was because, it, you know, this is the beginning of his tenure as the full time head coach. But like a lot of people, I think are going to look at it in a way with like Tom Herman, with Quinn Ewers. Um, it just matters so much because Trey Johnson's going to be a difference maker. Uh, I don't mean to always bring up Oklahoma State, but think about what Cade Cunningham did for Oklahoma State and Mike Boynton. I don't think Boynton's still the Oklahoma State head coach, if not for Cade Cunningham. Like getting that number one kid in the country that can do so many things well that are just already polished. You know, I mentioned what if Rodney Terry had ever had Paul George at Fresno State, what that would have looked like. Um, you know, he still had some NBA guys, though, at Fresno. So um, I, that is what I'm super intrigued to see, um, his work on the recruiting trail, because I think, like, a lot of people sleep on what Chris Beard was doing in the 2024 class. There was a lot of good things happening behind the scenes. Um, um, Rodney Terry was the leading recruiter for a lot of these kids, and a lot of these kids liked the fact that he was hired as a full-time head coach. Um, I digress on Rodney Terry. 